now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Who's there? <laughs> hey, Alex. It's Stephen Kravitz as I live and breathe. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? How are you? How are you? As I live and breathe, which may not be for that much longer, but we'll just hope. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Come on. You yeah. got to outlive all of us. Yeah, I guess. I guess. You know? Yeah. How's everything up there in uh, Massachusetts? It is colder than hell. Yeah. I have not seen my balls in three days. <laughs> I actually, Marjorie bought this for me for, I like it. for for my upcoming birthday. Yeah, it's really it's got a lining and everything, and it's just kind of really cool to wear on. It's like wearing a bathrobe. No, it, it looks great. Yeah. I saw you putting it on. Huh? I, I saw you putting it on. I was going, that's a nice piece of clothing. Yeah, yeah. She always buys me good stuff. She has great taste, you know. Uh, she always buys me really good stuff. So how are you doing uh, all, all, uh, all together? All together? I've got some liver issues coming up. What issues? Liver. Liver? Yes. Uh, what's the problem with the liver? Although I, I probably don't need to ask since you lived a rather rough life. Yes, well, I, I had hepatitis, well, I have hepatitis C. Okay, but that's curable now. Right, but it's been dormant for 40 years. Oh, you I said that, a, you said that, me? you said that the last time, yeah, yeah. that it's been dormant for, for 40 years, and now all of a sudden it decided to make itself known, huh? Right, so, so I had an ultrasound last week, and I have another ultrasound on the 22nd. Ah, Okay. All right. Liver hurts. Ow, oh, Uncle Alex, make it stop. Make, uh, ultrasound? Ultra, ultrasounds don't hurt. No, but my liver does. But your liver does. Does it hurt? Yeah. Really? A little bit. A little bit. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So, so you know, hepatitis C is... I, I had a girlfriend once who had hepatitis C, and it... It was a bane on her existence because it limited what she could do, okay? Right. Uh, and she always had to live with it, live with it, live with it, live with it. One day, uh, recently, they came out with a pill, and it just yeah, right. it, it just does away with it. Right, but they have to figure out what strain of hepatitis C you have before you can treat it. I see. Okay, well, so you just got to go through all the testing and all that crap, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, I, it, it is kind of a pain in the ass because you just like them to tell you, this is what you got. Right. Okay. Right, 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 right. This is what you got. Take this. It'll go away. You know, I mean, my, my, with my prostate cancer, there was this whole slow process. First, uh, I uh, went to a doctor, and he said, well, you know, your PSA is high. We better watch it for three months. So that's three months. Then three months right. later, he said, well, we better take another PSA. And then he tested it for something else, and he said, we better do a biopsy because it looks like you could have prostate right. cancer. So then he did that. You know, one thing leads to another, leads to another. Finally, I'm, I'm at, the, at the radiation stage and at the right, stage right, where right. I get the seeds. But it's just one thing after another. I guess they got to do a process of elimination, you know. Right, right, but, right, right, right. But still, it plays a great deal of puts places a great deal of stress on you. Absolutely, without without a doubt. Like I'm not sleeping right now. Yeah, and because of this. Pretty much, which is probably why I took a little nap on the couch. Yeah. Well, this, I don't know if this is going to kill you. You know. No, no, no. If 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 what I've been through hasn't killed me yet. Yeah, no. If you're, uh, 
We're, we're, a lot of us are amazed you're still alive, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I remember at one point, the dearest, the dearest little hint was, we're picking out dark clothing. Oh, boy. Well, they was just trying to go like that to you. Right, right. You know. So, I mean, Will, Will is posting on Facebook. Is he really? He just started posting. He put up a couple of jokes. Oh, wow. I've got to... Well, see, I tried to call him yesterday, and I was having trouble because I, it was always when I'm doing FaceTime, it came back, couldn't... It could not be... It, the call failed, okay? And I and I didn't know why, and I tried it on every one of my things. That's uh, iPhone, iPad, whatever. And so right. I finally wrote to her, and then she checked it out, and it turned out that he uh, somehow had to change his password or something, and... So I'm going to try calling him today. Here's what I do, Alex. I have the same password for every single one of my programs. Yes, and I did too. But then after a while, they all start saying, you got to change your password. This is not oh. a safe password. you got to come up with a safer password. And they nag you and nag you. So I changed my password to a capital letter and an asterisk or something or an right, 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 yeah. right, 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 question mark. Because I've had the same password for the last 25 years, right? And uh, sure. I'm sure that anybody who wants to hack me already knows it. I don't care. No, neither. What are they going to get from me? It, it, you know, it, it's the old Bubs line, you know, go ahead, steal my uh, uh, identity. You know, then you'll have no life. <laughs> How is Bob? You talk to him? Oh soon? yeah, I talk to him every two weeks. We do a little thing like this. Yeah, Bubs is fine. Bubs is fine, except Bubs is uh, is getting squirrely from the, you know, from this whole thing that we have going on here. Uh, which, yeah, we all are. Which is a pain in the ass, you know. So, uh, I mean, uh, I, uh, I, I, I. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting past the point of COVID fatigue. I'm kind of like just deciding I'm never going outdoors ever again. Yeah, but you gotta go outdoors. Oh yeah, today it's no, it, not it's gonna it's snow just, today. It's gonna snow tomorrow. Thanks so much. Yeah, well then we're sending it over your way. We're supposed to get a foot. Yeah, we're supposed to get a foot. I think here. Is what they say, and for New York City, that's a lot. That's a lot. Of you know, snow. I think I think last winter, I think we went without a snow at all. You know, really? Yeah, yeah. It was pretty light last year. You know. Yeah. Well, it's picking back up for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, so if, of course, you haven't been working, have you? No, 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 no. Yeah, and all the uh, all the clubs are closed, obviously. Some of the clubs are reopening, but to tell you the truth, Alex, I'm not really, I'm not really into it right now. You don't. You know, you, I, you, I, in other words, you don't want to do the stand up. No, I love doing stand up. Don't get me wrong. I just don't want to like take a shower and slip out to a club at ten o'clock at night while people get drunk. I just I'm not. Yeah. Not into it right now. Yeah. So making people laugh, though. Come on. That's there's nothing better than that. No, you can't beat that. No, no. I often said that actually making an audience laugh was almost better than sex. Uh, but it is a lot like sex because you're trying to satisfy your partner. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and with an audience, an with an audience, you're trying to, you know. Right. You know, and also, I always found with sex that I, I I love the power to be able to make someone come. Yes. Okay. The reason being, and I know a lot of guys aren't that way. I was that way because it was the showman in me, because that was my sense of approval of what I was doing. That's so correct. when I when I would go out and make an audience laugh, which I wasn't a stand-up, but still I did stuff on stage. Okay. Right. Right, right, but when right, I right. would make them laugh or really laugh big, it was like me giving a woman an orgasm, and it all had to do with that you are uh, what? What's uh, how am I trying to put this? Uh, you are controlling 
someone else's emotion. You're, you're in charge. Yeah, but you're controlling someone else's emotion. You're making them right. laugh. You're making or, them come. Or, or as, as, as Durst would say, you make people laugh on purpose. Yes. Or, or how does he put it? Yeah. You, you make people laugh against their will but, or something but, like that. But, Whatever but, it is, you make them laugh. There's a certain power in that. You oh, know, yeah. You know, and it's the same power when that I... When you're on a roll in a big house... Then it's not, not, you can't beat that when you're on, when you, you know, you play a big house so much different. Like, didn't we used to go down and play, um, what, Palo Alto? Mm-hmm. Is that where we would play a lot? Yeah. Oh, Palo Alto, you at the Keystone. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, we used to do our shows. That, that was like rock stardom. Oh, because we had, it was a huge crowd. How many was it in there? Maybe 600 people in there? Maybe whatever, more. Whatever, whatever it said, we had that many people. Well, the biggest audience that I ever had for one of my shows was at the Frost Amphitheater, where we did uh, 9,000. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And now, you did Comedy Day, didn't you, in the beginning when there was no, like 30,000 no. people? No, never did comedy. I never was involved in Comedy Day at all. I never was asked to. You know, so I, I well, just didn't, you know. I don't know if I was asked to or if I just demanded to be on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would do it in an instant because Debbie Durst runs it now. Oh, yeah. And and uh, since she is the queen of San Francisco comedy, you do her bidding. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is correct. And I don't say that in any negative way, okay? No, no, she's the matriarch of comedy. Right. Right. And uh, we were, I think we mentioned before that that they kind of took some people on almost as their children. I talked to her once about this on the show. And she said, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, they were our children. We didn't have any children, so they, we raised them. Well, you you know, I call uh, Will and Debbie mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I call them mom and dad. Yeah. Well, dad, uh, dad's still in the hospital. I mean, I, have to, I talked to him. And um, uh, as I said, uh, uh, I've had trouble the last couple of days talking to him because he's something wrong with his iPad, but now he's got right. it working again, so I'm going to try him to, again today. Uh, I, uh, uh, he is, you know, it's strange. He, he's completely lucid, has all his comedy chops, all right. of that. It's just part of him doesn't work physically. That's right. And that's got to be frustrating. You know, that's got to really be frustrating. I mean, can I can't imagine it. Well, that's why I was so surprised when he posted a joke. Yeah. Because Debbie told me he can't get his, I think it's his left hand he has trouble going with. It's his left side, both his left leg and his hand, his arm. Right. That have been, uh, but he's getting some of his hand back, she says. Right, so he's typing, because yeah. he wasn't going to type until he could use both hands. Yeah. This is a very slow process, I might add, that, oh, yeah. that strokes aren't something that you go, okay, we'll do a little uh, calisthenics here, and we'll do a little physical therapy, and you're good to go. No, this is years and years and years, and it's all slow. And she wrote me uh, about a week ago and said, you know, it's going slowly, but it's going. Right, In right, other right, words, right, right, right. His hand is moving a little bit. You know. She has been so optimistic for the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. He said to me, he said, the main thing I'd like to do is be home for Thanksgiving, but he wasn't able to, you know. But, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I, I just, I hope he gets, I hope he gets enough of his stuff back that he at least can write, which he loves doing. Oh, yeah, and he's very prolific. Yeah, very prolific. He considers himself a writer first before anything else. Right. Right, and then, right, if it, right. it, then if it comes to stand up, I guess I'll maybe have to do sit down. But he, you know, he he still has all his speech and everything else. So it's just a matter of somehow being able to get him onto a stage. So right. Well, you know, you get an electric wheelchair and you put a ramp. Yeah, yeah, and that big it, deal. Yeah, and I told him, I said, so far as writing, you know, you could dictate it, and he doesn't want to. He no, wants no, to. No, he no, wants no. to. He wants to write it. You know? Oh, I can remember sitting in their living room and you're having a conversation with him. 
He's watching TV and he's typing at the same time. He's writing. Yeah, yeah. You know, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to do that. He does. He he's just says that isn't for me. I don't want to do the dictation route. And I said, you know, well, maybe that's what you got to do, in order to do what you do for the time right. being. Because you can't type with one hand and let the machine do the typing for you. Right? There you go. And it's all pretty accurate. This voice recognition. Hey, listen, we've run out of time, dear friend. Right? Yeah, this just goes by so fast with you. I, I'm amazed by it. But we'll talk to you again next week. How's that? That works for me. Ladies and gentlemen, his name, Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Bye. The legend. Bye-bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Mm, yes, and that was, of course, Stephen Kravitz, and he'll be back with us again next week. We love him. We love him. He, it, I'm so glad we added him to the mix because he's just perfect. He's idyllic. He's idyllic, I say. He's idyllic. Okay. Anyway, let me see here. Uh, anything I got to talk to you about? No. No. I was worried that my washer was leaking before the show started. Something always goes wrong just before the show starts. You know, we have this washer, and it leaks if you turn it on uh, uh, large. If you turn it on medium, it's fine. But then I found a puddle of water, but it wasn't coming from under the washer and dryer, so obviously it isn't from the washer and dryer. So I think what happened was girlfriend did a wash, and when she removed the wash from the washer to put it in the dryer, maybe some of the water splashed down on the floor, and that's what that was. But, you know, and then I'm obsessed by those things for the rest of the show and probably well into next morning. Anyway, 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 we got a whole bunch of people waiting here to be part of our citizen panel. Well, at least uh, three of them at this point. And who knows who will join us later, but let's go to them right now. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello, Alex. Okay, there we go. Hello, Jeffrey. How are you? I'm here and and. It is snowing. It is snowing. It's snowing up a bitch, as they say. And, of course, Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charles. Hey, Alex. And uh, we'll add to the mix Brian Neary, who is joining here now. Uh, he should be here in just a moment. Come on. Poof. There he is. Okay. Hello. Hello, Brian. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, uh, yeah, It's uh, it's been snowing. Up, uh, uh, how bad is it up in Connecticut, Jeffrey? Oh, my son was out there a little bit, and yeah. I think it's over a foot. Really? Yeah. Really? It's it's pretty, it, it's getting pretty deep out in front of my place, you know? So, um, we, it, it's uh, it's that time of the year, right? I hate snow. But it, why do you hate snow? I, li I love snow. I grew up in Chicago, and I was the youngest. I was the one that always had to shovel the snow. <laughs> Oh, so okay. I hate snow, and that's why I'm in Texas or Arizona okay. or California, okay. someplace warm. I don't hate <laughs> snow because somehow somebody else is snowing, is plowing it for me. I hear it scraping yeah. outside. They they put them on uh, garbage trucks, the plows, and that takes care of it. But, you know, we're talking to a couple of people here in California and in Texas, and they what do they know about snow? Right, Alan? <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you know you anything? Do you, yeah, I can hear you fine. What, do you know anything about snow? No, never been in it. You've never been in it. You know, you're. you're that's interesting because you're from California. Yes. And as a kid, I was never into snow till perhaps I was maybe 15, 16 years old. I'd never been in snow. And then it snowed in San Francisco. And so, uh, we were, like, thrilled we had snow. And so that was the first time I had ever seen snow. <clears throat> then, of course, I moved to New York, and I got to know what snow was like. In fact, I remember unrelenting snowstorms in New York City, unlike anything we're getting here now. I remember one. This is a true story. It was so bad that they then would plow it up and into huge mountains, literally mm -hmm. mountains that were on street corners, and they just pile them up. <laughs> so um, the, 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 we had a horrible snowstorm, and I was working at ABC, and I went into ABC, and there was a car parked in front of ABC. 
and the snow truck came along, the plow came along and just plowed all the snow over the car, right? And I come out after the show, and there's this big lump where the car was, right? <laughs> that because was the snow had been had covered the car completely. Okay. Well, now, I go back to work the next night, and it's still out there, okay? <laughs> but now it's getting a little harder because now it's not yeah. snowing anymore, and it starts becoming a big block of ice and i'm figuring this car is encased in a block of ice now and how is this person going to until it melts how's this person ever going to get his car out of there and every night i would look at this lump out there and the ice was starting to recede and starting to recede and starting to, and eventually it receded and there was no car there <laughs> and i figure the uh, the snow ate the car is what i <laughs> what i figured you know, it's, it snowed in uh, in Redwood City Hills, uh, 1976. So was it around that time? Uh, in San Francisco, do you remember? And it, no, it actually. I remember it snowing at the beach. Oh really? Okay. Yes, at the beach. Now occasionally it would snow on top of Mount Tamalpais. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. but that's yeah, it's a, yeah. somewhat of an elevation, right? Yeah. But Mount Hamilton. Oh, and I remember it snowing at Stinson Beach. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, it was very rare. As yeah, it, yeah. You know, and then kids go out, you know, and they go crazy because they never did anything like this in their life. But they're also not prepared for it because they don't have the clothes for it or anything else. Mm. So anyway, that was my, my introduction to snow. But uh, yep. as no. you say, Alan, you've never been in the snow. Never been in the snow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I would have thought maybe I mean, in, where I live in the Bay Area rarely snows here, yeah. and it's not a lot of snow. Yeah, but I I would have thought, for instance, upon oh, occasion, you, you would have gone. Yeah, you would have gone to the Sierra and uh, you know checked out the snow, uh, but I guess you didn't. Yeah, we grab a cabin every year. Really? Up there? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you rent the cabin, and it's so cheap. So a couple of families, and we go all into it together. Yeah. Um, so they have uh, Mount Hamilton gets snow, you know, on the ridge there. So it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, right above us is uh, uh, it. it man, I forget how to pronounce it, but it's a big box up there. So this point, Mount Tam and uh, Mount Hamilton, they used to use as radar points because they're the three highest points in the Bay Area, and blah blah blah. But you can see from my house. You can see up on the Santa Cruz Mountain, up on the very top, there's this square. There's a building up there. And you go up there, and there's sort of a museum up there now. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I uh, I just, uh, you know, I was I, I was like you, Alan, until I reached a certain age. And then somehow, I, I guess it was also because I went to work in Reno. Uh, and so I started to see snow. Yeah. There's no snow in Reno. Well, no, but there is in, uh, if you just start going up, uh, you know, the grade up to the summit, o uh, the yeah. summit over to over top, you go over the Mount Rose Summit. And Mount mm -hmm. Rose Summit, that got mm -hmm. snow. I yeah. mean, it got a lot of snow. So, yeah. yeah. I tried to talk Phil into joining us tonight, but that's a no go. Why, why, why is that? I don't know why. He says he's been there, done that. Yeah, well, we we found a new way to expose him, you know, and he's <laughs> no, yeah, he, exactly been he's admitting to more, that. and he seems to he seems to prefer that, the way we're doing it. Yeah, yeah, he likes that. It mm. gives him uh, Tuesday a half hour just you and him. Yeah, yeah, and it it, it, it people say it, it sounds really good that they enjoy it. You know, it does, and especially now that he's calmed down about Trump. Well, I mean, what he he has to. You know, no, he doesn't. There is no there. There is no hope for Trump left. Okay. Yeah. Although Trump so still he's, says now he's, he's asking his uh, people uh, if they want to support him to run in twenty twenty four. Isn't it a little early? Well, yeah, that's that's. I thought that too, but uh, I don't know why this guy's such a masochist. <laughs> Well, he needs more money. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, the, only, right. it's the only job he has is right. is running for political office now, and I think he got um, somewhat um, um, addicted to power. 
You know, I think that's the thing he's going to miss is the power. I mean, whatever, whatever power he thought he had, he didn't really exercise. You know, when he was pretty powerful. He had his own TV show. He's got his own golf courses. He's got his own private 767 jet. I mean, you know. No, I don't think yeah. he has that jet. Does he still have that jet? Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah, I think so. How, otherwise, how's he going to get around? I'll bet you after this is over, he's broke. I'll bet you. Mar-a-Lago doesn't want him anymore, right? Yeah, yeah I heard that. I saw that in the news today. Yeah. Well, All these... the neighbors are causing a big hubbub. They don't want him around there. <laughs> Pretty <Don't>... funny. <laughs> We don't want you here. You know, when people in uh, in uh, in Florida tell you they don't want you, <laughs> you know, you're, <laughs> you're you're pretty much toast. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, he's not Jewish. Hey, folks, we could use some more callers here. Where are you? You know, we did that show what on uh, Monday. We had fifteen people. Yeah. Without even breathing heavy. You know. One show. Huh? What time are you on on Monday? Monday we go on at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. We do this little one o'clock. We, one, one o'clock. Uh, one o'clock. Time. Time. Not, one o'clock. <laughs> yeah, Brian, I'm not up at that hour. Yeah, but we so we we do this little. At PM? <laughs> I started this little thing for the fun of it because I just figured I'd do it for my other machine, and we could do it on Zoom and go directly to Facebook because they have a direct connection to Facebook. Mm. And I just thought we'd do it and see what happened. And all of a sudden, I mean, it's like tons of people call it. And the amount of people that watch it after the fact eclipses anything we do here, you know. And it's different people, too. It's hmm? pretty cool. It's, it's different people. Yeah, and it's a different mood. Uh, we don't talk politics. Brian's probably the only one that has employment. Huh? Out of this group. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an assumption that Brian's the only one that has an employment. Well, you know something? I think you're right. Well, the yeah. rest of well, us are retired. Yeah, well, it, we're, we're retired. I, well, how old are you, Alan? Well, I'll be 62 in the end of December. We had that discussion last and night. And so you are retired. I'm retired. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, you were with the police department. Yeah, but I've done other jobs since then. I got hurt on the job there. And, you know, when you're hurt on the job, you, you know, you're damaged goods. Time to get rid of you. Uh, when you're not your Superman, that's the way they think he is. So yeah, that's in the security business, right? In law enforcement and, and the firefighters too. You know. It's, well, uh, you're a pretty big guy. I mean, I hire you for security. Yeah. Well, I'm actually a pretty good shot too. Well, I don't <laughs> want you shooting anybody in my name. Oh, oh, oh that's right. That's right. You so know. <laughs> well, I had so, a. Um, I uh, you know years ago I had a bodyguard uh, when I was working in San Francisco. Uh, and uh, why did I have a bodyguard? A, a, a couple of incidences where we were a little afraid of what happened. So just to be on the safe side, when I would go do a major public event, I had this guy uh, who was my was my bodyguard, and he would he was carrying a gun in his boot, you know. But but he it's told me kind the, of a strange place. The, the the main thing you do as a bodyguard, you know, people these these rappers and stuff they get their their posse and they get their bodyguards and they're all around them and you see the bodyguards you know and he said we don't do that he said you don't want anybody to know you've got a bodyguard that's what i'm here for mm -hmm. if they know that you that i'm a bodyguard behind you they're going to take me out first and then take you out you know he said i'm going to walk behind you nobody's going to know that you've got a bodyguard and that was the way we did it you know so with all the high tech in the Bay Area, uh -huh. uh, a lot of the uh, high end people in businesses are uh, a, a high risk of kidnap uh, traveling and stuff. And so they usually have a protection detail, executive protection. And a lot of these guys are retired cops, mm -hmm. uh, retired Navy SEALs, you know, that type of stuff. There are a couple guys that uh, go shooting with Phil and I that are do executive protection for a large corporation here yeah. in the Bay Area. But do they have the same philosophy? You don't make yourself too present as, as well, security? You know, they dress in a suit and tie, but, they, you know, they probably carry a backup gun in their shoe or on their ankle, but they carry, you know, a primary gun concealed on them. Yeah. yeah. A big gun, yeah. you know, like a, like a, a 1911 style. Those jobs must pay well. Oh, yeah, yeah. These guys are, I don't know, two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000 a year. But these guys are, you know, I mean, they have a lot, uh, you know, most of these guys have been on SWAT or, mm -hmm. um, you know, that type of stuff. They're, they're uh, used to getting in the fray, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, they are, um, 
they're trained in martial arts, a lot of them, uh, you know, just through their training. And, uh, you know, so, and they're good shots too. I mean, you know, to, to protect an executive from some big corporation around here that needs the protection. If somebody's going to try and kidnap them, you got to be ready. It's a, it's usually a team when they go out of country or uh, somewhere else, a team of four or five guys. And, wow. uh, you know, you, you got to be ready for anything. You got to be ready for, to arrest somebody or to uh, call the police or to, if it gets into a situation, uh, shoot somebody. But then again, most of the time, nothing happens at all, you know? Most of the time. Yeah. But you want people, if you're, if you're a high risk of getting kidnapped or extorted or something like that, you want a good security team. You want people that are, that are armed, that uh, know how to use the weapons, uh, know how to use their head. You don't, you don't want Joe Schmo security guard down the road with a nightstick or something like that. You well, want we, we, when we used my security, um, his, his job was of course, to watch out for me. Um, because we had had some incidences that were kind of scary, you know, and it wasn't that I was the kind of person people threatened, but you know, when you're well known, people tend to, what's the word I'm going, try to make trouble. Sure. Okay. Uh, and, uh, also he had a double purpose, another purpose too. I had a signal for him and, and I wanted to be able to be touchy feely with my public. In other words, I wanted to be able to talk to my fans and so on. So if I was at some kind of event, I wanted to be able to kind of mingle with them and talk with them and so on. But some of them would then start talking my ear off more than I would want to. And I'd want to get out of the situation. And I had a signal, which I think it pulled my ear or something like that. And at that point, he would come over to me and say, Alex, we need you over here right now. There and you get, go. And get me out of it. So he <clears throat> had that purpose as well. So these guys on these details are usually good with uh, medical emergencies, anything from a bee sting, an anaphylactic shot on up to a gunshot wound or something like that. Yeah. So they're usually some people on the team are tactical medics. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, that, that, that type of stuff. They, they work like the Secret Service does with the president. They know a lot about this person. They know the medicines he takes, his health condition, his blood type. And if they're going into a foreign country, they get there before him, just like the Secret Service does, and they map things out. Yeah, my, they, guy, my uh, guy in those days knew that... Treats to get away from the bad it, guys. It, it, uh, in, those, in those days, my guy knew that if I had some kind of medical condition that suddenly hit me to stick a Coke spoon up my nose. There so you that go. that was... Uh, <laughs> Perfect. I don't think these guys are doing that. Yeah, but, uh, no, 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 I'm sure they're not. I, you know, you know, uh, but, but, you know, if you're an executive in a corporation, mm -hmm. uh, probably shouldn't be eating donuts on TV, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm I've... teasing you, Brian. I, uh, I, I, Phil said I should Google you. And so I Googled you afterwards and I'm not going to disclose uh, personal stuff. I don't know what people know about you here. So they can Google you too. What about Brian? Oh, Brian. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We know we know a lot about him. Maybe not everything. Well, but he's an executive, and so I don't know if he's uh, at, at risk of anything. And But he probably other people in the company might be. Are you at, uh, are, uh, does your company feel they're in, at risk at all? Anybody? Brian? No, no, no. No. No, but, but I mean, with all, you know, with all the stuff going on with copage, you never know. You know, yep. it, I, I began to wonder about with all these vaccines out there and stuff, if there aren't going to be some UPS trucks hijacked, <laughs> you know. So, so I guess what they're doing is the uh, U.S. Secret Service, I, I, I mainly, I, I take that back, the U.S. Marshal Service yeah. is protecting these flights and, in, in, and the medicine until it, it gets to the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So, and they're... They're together. They got their stuff together. They're they usually two guys at a time. And if they have to go through a bad neighborhood, they have uh, tactical weapons and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so. because, I mean, uh, I just I just would think that somebody would want to hijack those trucks, you know. And Absolutely. I, the, you know, probably Brian's business, I think, is is testing mm -hmm. versus versus the vaccines. And yeah. so, yeah, uh, a lot less chance somebody's going to hijack a truck full of testing medical equipment I'm, I'm sure it could happen but uh yeah 
because we also have our own instruments that we have to use for testing. So, you know, the, the vaccine is a lot more valuable to the common person, but right. still it's like, what? yeah, sort of bizarre, you know, what they would do with the vaccine unless they would try to sell it to some other country or something. But, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to inject myself. And, well, while we're uh, at it, while we're at it, we haven't asked Dr. Doom to give us his daily report. <laughs> How many I'm seconds? We set, we set a new record, beating yesterday's record for uh, COVID cases, and then we set a new record for COVID deaths today. Oh, really? What's the, what, it, where, in Texas or just in the United no, the States? Whole country. The whole country. Okay. How many deaths? 3,784. No. Jeez. No. Yep, a death every 23 seconds. Wow. 23 seconds, we just lost another American. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me look at my clock here. They are, they are claiming dead. The CDC put out a thing a, a week ago and said that 40% of the people that have died from COVID are in convalescent hospitals. Oh, really? And so that's why yeah. they're giving uh, frontline workers and yeah. patients in convalescent hospitals the shot first. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that should that, that will help. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I, it, it, I, I we're almost probably, 17 million cases. Almost 17 million, you mean total in the United States. Total, yeah. yeah. We're like 16 million 900 and something. And where do we thousand. stand now in the world? Oh, uh, we're doubling everybody nearest. Oh, people. absolutely. Well, wait a minute. I got my uh my thing here. Hold on a second. Where is it? I think it? Brazil's second. Huh? I think like Brazil's right. second with like nine million. But, I think you're right. Like nine million. I, I can't. I, where is? Oh, here's my COVID map. Okay, hold on a second. We'll see what the COVID map has to say. I feel um, sorry for the healthcare people right now because people are being selfish, not wearing a mask, not yeah. taking care of themselves. Yep. And these doctors and nurses are working 14, 16 hours, no days off. Um, it's just. It's very unfair Hospitals to them. Are full here yeah. in Texas. Oh, they are here in California. Oh, we've been joined yeah. by somebody new. Oh no, that's Jeff. He's wearing a mask. Excuse me. <laughs> um, U.S. Uh, almost almost seventeen million. Almost seventeen million. India is next behind us with almost ten million. Brazil with seven million. Oh, India. Russia and with two million, they're not doing as bad. You know, I mean, we're doing terribly. We're doing just terribly. Part of it is the administration. And here in New York, so far, we've had thirty-five thousand nine hundred twenty-seven deaths. Yeah, now that's from the beginning when we had it really bad. You know, and we've got almost twenty-five thousand deaths in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you call really bad. I think this is a lot worse right well, Texas now. Texas is number two in cases. Yep. Yeah, except for the, the and, numbers are a lot higher. And right 24,920 deaths. Yep. Out in California, uh, 21,817 deaths. Florida, 20,204 deaths. I mean, these were states that had just, you know, a couple hundred deaths way back when. Yeah, un until July. New Jersey, yeah. 18,000, but it turns out that New York uh, is is eclipsing New Jersey in cases. So uh, we're 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 back in the we're back in the in the fight here of, of trying to see who can be number one with deaths. You know, I mean, we're we're still we're still only we're what number four in the country from the bottom. Okay, so we're still okay that way. But ah oh, man, I'm I'm not going out. I'm not even. Yeah. No, I'm not going to go out at all. You know, and Marjorie yeah, still. Marjorie's going to work to her office on Friday, and I keep saying, "Don't do this, right?" You know, you're just flirting with danger. Yeah, yeah we just got. You. Hmm? Yeah, we just got. We just got the machines mm -hmm. uh, for India. So we have India factory that we're opening. Mm -hmm. That I'm in charge of all the manufacturing stuff and China. So India, we have all the machines over there. We're starting. We actually had to do videos because no travel. There's the travel ban. So we actually are trying to. We're doing some live sessions with them on how to run this stuff. 
<clears throat> and it's already hard enough for us to run it here. So, well, but um, what happens? So. What happens to your business? Okay, what happened to my glasses? I don't know where my glasses are now. Yeah. Uh, what happens to your business uh, if um, uh, when, when the COVID thing is over with? I mean, are you guys dead in the uh, water, no. or, or or do you have another other stuff you no. do? It's this is what so he does, little... folks. That's the uh, the um, Cartridge. It's a yeah, cartridge, and this you you put the what well, I guess you put the stuff in there. You put the Q-tip in you there. You pop that lid open, and there's the big hole. That's where the Q-tip, the swab okay, goes. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah. See it, folks? There we go. Yeah. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's where the yeah, swab. You see it goes. online, right? Yeah. And then yeah, they've put... been a business a long time, though, uh, Alex, and so I'm sure they're doing really better. Yeah, you know, we we we, yeah. I mean, flu is seasonal, and it's still our biggest seller. I mean, still looking at MTB with Bill and Melinda Gates for, you know, for Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is not going to go away. We, we still know that they're going to be testing needed all, all some. All Tony, needed. turn your mic off when you leave the room to go talk to your mother. Wait, what's he doing? I can mute him. What's he saying? Can you mute him? Huh? Oh, I can mute him. Yeah, I could, I could do that. Oh, well. Tony, when you go away, Thanks, when you go away to talk to your mother, or she more me, or more specifically to yell at your mother, uh, listen, it would be nice if you off. turned off your. Oh, I'm sorry. Might. Yeah. Did you hear me? No, so we we yeah, know we can hear you. We can hear it. Yeah, we we know we'll be selling still for a long time, yeah. because because we also combine the new assay that we have the four respiratory. So we can tell the, the three major flu and then the COVID. So we can differentiate all four of those. Let, let me ask you this. From what you have read, uh, what I read was that this current uh, cocktail or vaccine um, was discovered, say, I think something like 18 years ago. And they've just been waiting for the right situation to come along to use it or to apply it or to adapt it. Am I right about that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the technology they're using is the, the the mRNA, which is really, really new high tech stuff. So that's why yeah. we're it's, able it, to get In the, the old days, they would give you a, a, a shot of the flu itself and uh, and let you build antibodies based on getting the shot you got. Now that's, no long, yeah. now that's no longer the case. What right. this does is this just simply tells your body how to go after the, uh, uh, the stuff, you know. Yeah, they what, describe boy. it like... It's, they call it messenger RNA. So they're showing, they they show like the you know it, it goes up to the body and it'll tell it'll show the DNA a picture of the of what the virus looks like mm -hmm. and then it'll run away and then it knows what it looks like to fight it when it comes. So sort of. By the way, it. I don't want to interrupt you on that thought. We go right back to it. But if people listen. I'll turn my mic up. You hear that? Yeah. You know what that is? That's snow. That's snow. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Glad I'm here. Hmm? I'm yeah, glad well, I'm in Texas. You know, you know, but you know what's nice? I'm glad I'm here because I'm inside. It's warm. Mm -hmm. It's nice. And it's horrid outside. But I'm inside. I'm not out yeah. there. You know? you know what she just asked me? Is it still snowing out? Does she not hear what's going on? <laughs> oh, are you getting the same sounds? Yeah, I'm okay. getting hell, Alex. It's just blowing. My mother has one of those old exhaust fans in the kitchen, and it's just whipping around like crazy. Really? Yeah, like one of those old fans that we, they don't even use it anymore. Listen to that. Yeah, it's, it's really windy. Is that crazy. hail or is that snow? It's got to be that snow. That sounds like hell, Alex. That's what I was going to ask you. I think that's hell. Well, Open okay. the window. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, really. Take <laughs> the camera. Let's see some snow. You, you used to take that video. Remember, you, you had that camera. You had the camera outside the window. Remember? Oh, there you, you go. Well, right I was thinking of putting a camera. Out. Oh, here we go. Here, Tony's oh, going to do it. Wait a minute. The bodega closed. Oh, it's still open. Oh, there we go. Look at look at look at that little horrible. Yeah, look at that. No thanks. See? It's bad. Oh. In the drive, and I never see it snowing. Snow it's time to turn the heater up. <laughs> yeah, look wow. at that. I'm afraid of that. Have the window open. Have the window open. We can we can see your monitor there. We can see your monitor there. But it's it that's good. I I was thinking of what I can do is I can actually in the other room 
I have uh, uh, some equipment too, and I can put the camera outside, okay, the window, and then I could turn a thing on so that I can play it in here, and then I could show you what was going on, but I- Oh, we're getting a tour of, of uh, Tony's house. Well- I'm taking my mother's room. Dining room. room. <laughs> yeah. She's got rollers in her hair right now. Yeah. And the hideous, We've got Jeff's, the hideous. Oh, like the last two weeks, we got Jeff's whole house. Yeah, I think. Jeff's the garage. Oh. Well, we saw the uh, koi fish that he that's behind <laughs> them. Yeah, yeah, you know. But anyway. this is why I, this is why I pick a room that doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. To, I mean, I'm in the kitchen and there's closets here, and over here is my pool table and pool room, mm -hmm. but not a lot of stuff around. Unlike our host here, that's got seven million videos in the, <laughs> in the background. Well, it, 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 believe it or not, you know that was the biggest waste of money I ever spent. Yeah, uh, and the reason being that I don't know if I do. I have a player that even plays those. <laughs> I have a lot of DVDs too. I have a DVD player. I do have a DVD. I do have a couple of DVD players, but right. geez, you know, I don't really need them. You know, you don't um, use them, but you have one. <laughs> Yeah. So, Brian, are you looking for somebody to carry your briefcase or something? <laughs> what? Hey, no. Yeah. I'm six four. <clears throat> so I'm already, I'm already pretty big. So. Are you six four? See, we can't tell I'm how six, tall people yeah. are. You oh. wouldn't know that Tony's like three feet four. I'm, I'm sure. Not. Four. <laughs> how tall? <laughs> how tall are you, Tony? <laughs> Me, I'm, me and my mother. I'm five seven and a half. I think. I always say a half. <laughs> my mother's like five three. Five seven and a half. I see. And a half. Well, that's not bad. My mother's like five three. Alex, she's short. We got a short family. You know, when you're a male and you're five seven, you got to add that extra half an inch. <laughs> yeah, not that it means anything, but yeah. It, well, yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny that a lot of very famous actors are short. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Al Pacino's really tiny. How uh, small? Robert is Redford is under four, under under five feet tall, I think, somewhere. Like really? Or maybe, yeah. No, he's not. <laughs> no, not Robert Redford. Well, wait a minute. Let me let me see, let me see here. I will okay, put this in. I, I, what I love about Google, the, the only thing I love about Google is you put in shortest yeah, movie. Oh What's the guy uh, that played Shane? Actor in the movie was. Uh, Real Dustin Hoffman. Oh, Dustin, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman's Dustin really Hoffman's small. Short, yeah. And wait a minute. Okay. Okay. So, uh, shortest movie actors. Who is the shortest movie star? Okay. Mickey Rooney. No, wait a minute. The shortest man in Mickey Hollywood. Mickey Rooney was pretty short. Oh, the guy. The guy who was uh, Mini Me. Mini Me. What's the guy's name? Well, that. That. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The plane. The plane. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, famous short men. Well, I don't want them. Uh, these celebrities are shorter than you would think. Are we are. talking about oh, how high? Actors and movie stars. Oh, okay. guys are in other places. Danny DeVito is 4'10". Yeah. Of course, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Woody Allen is 5'5". Five five. Wow. Elijah Wood is 5'6". They didn't even yeah, have to make him. They didn't have to make him look short in Lord of the Rings, did they? I love Lord of the Rings. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise, 5'7". Yeah. Al Pacino, 5'6". Mike Myers, 5'8", Ben Stiller, 5'7", uh, Dustin Hoffman, 5'5". Five, five. Wow. Uh, Scott, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Martin Freeman, 5'4". Johnny Galecki of uh, Big Bang Theory, 5'5". 5'5". We're midgets. I think that, no, I think when he was playing opposite the woman who plays Penny, they had to put him on a box or something, you know. Simon Helberg is 5'6". Looks like they were all proportionate to each other yeah, on that that's show. that's how come you didn't know. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Who else? Um, Giancarlo Esposito is 5'8". Oh, Martin wow. Scorsese. Ready for this? Sure. 5'3". Yeah. yeah wow. He's short, yeah. yeah. Emilio Estevez, 5'4 and a half. Joe Pesci, 5'3". Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, Jet Li, 5'6". Uh, let's see here. Anybody else of any big name here? Let's see here. Zach Val. No, we don't care about Zach Val. No. Uh, Martin Sheen, 5'6". Nathan Lane, 5'5". Five, five. Billy Crystal, 5'6". Jesse Eisenberg, 5'7". Frankie Muniz, 5'4". Uh, Rob Schneider, 5'3". Yeah. Wow. I don't remember him being that 
that tiny, but you know. Hmm. Oh, Robert Redford you was You know what I know? Is, <laughs> hmm? I look at my old pictures from elementary school, and we, the shortest kid was the one, we were always the one holding the uh, board, like class of, say, 79. I was always in the front. I'm <laughs> son of a bitch. I used to say. Really? Yeah, because the short kids were in the front, because then, you know, it'd be easy to see it. No, oh, okay. Well, they always made it that way. If I show you, like, the old photos, it's like the shortest ones are in the front. Yeah. But, uh, so they're, they're Speaking awesome. of sharp people, Tom Cruise. Did you see Tom Cruise exploding on his, his, uh, his movie set? I guess yeah, some people yeah. weren't, weren't following COVID procedure, I right. guess. Right. They weren't wearing masks and things like that. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, I, I'm telling you, it, it, the, the risk people are taking is just... I mean, I hate to be on this every night, folks, but it's just amazing to me, you know? Um, come on. It, it's not difficult to wear a mask. The Lone Ranger does it for... No, it's up here. I'm sorry. I don't think everybody that's getting COVID is not wearing a mask. <clears throat> I think the more you're in crowds be at work or um, in, in, a, in, a, in a mall or, or shopping or whatever, uh, the more risk you're going to have. Masks are not 100%. I, I, dis well, yeah, I, I disagree with you on that. I mean, yes, you're, you're going in, in a mall has certainly got its risk factor. But if you're wearing a mask and everybody else there is wearing a mask, the chances are pretty small. You've really cut the percentages down. Um, um, but the fact is it only takes one or two people not wearing a mask yeah. to start causing a problem. Um, so, yep. you know, uh, it, it, but it's just that everybody just wear a fucking mask for the time being till this thing's over with, you know? Let's, let's minimize the damage. But it just keeps going up and up and up and up. They say we'll be up to 400,000 dead by New Year. Yeah. Come on. Yes, Jeff. Oh, turn on your mic, Jeff. Brian, did you always uh, wear masks at the factory? Yes. In, in the controlled environment rooms, <clears throat> we started wearing masks when we started making flu because we're afraid somebody's going to cough in there. Because we, we protect, we wear all the PPE because we're protecting the cartridge from us. So we want to make sure. I mean, I used to get pictures from, from our, our, Customers with like a cartridge with a hair in it before. <laughs> God, mm. so embarrassing. But yeah, then we went into full gear. But this was like, you know, like 10 or 15, about 10 or 12 years ago when we started doing flu. You yeah, know, we started yeah. doing masks. But then we got into masks like even outside the, the rooms pretty quick when COVID hit. Wow. And we've been really good. We had, we've only had two people at the very beginning. I mean, you're talking about a thousand, at least a thousand people. Um, two people at the very beginning that had it, and um, and then one person just lately they they had to do a, a super clean on one one area, but uh, it's been pretty tight at our air, our work, and we have a lot of people going going around. But well, let me bring up something that was brought up on another show the other night. There's only one other show really. I mean, we have a couple of others, but the Jack show, and he asked the question: What's the worst movie you ever saw? <laughs> And I thought about it, and I went, you can't ask that question. I mean, move maybe worst movies you've ever seen, but the worst movie you ever saw? Here's the problem with the worst movie you ever saw. It's worth watching because it's so bad. <laughs> right? So how can you say the worst movie is the worst movie? The worst movie is the one that's the most boring. And I think that would be anything with Tyler Perry in it, I would imagine, you know. I I have yet to watch one of those Medea movies. Has anybody watched those things? No. No. Okay, well, I'm proud of this group then, you know. <laughs> but no, I was saying about you can't really say what's the worst movie because I know some terrible... I mean, like, they say, uh, for instance, they always make a big deal about uh, 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 Plan 9 from Outer Space being the worst movie ever made. But it isn't the worst movie ever made because the guy didn't have money, okay? So he had to do it on the cheap. And if you're going to do it on the cheap, it's going to be pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. But that's what kind of gives it its, uh, gives it its, um, it, its uh, charm, as it were. 
However, take a movie where they spent mm. millions upon millions of dollars. They had as much money as they could possibly spend to throw at it, and it still was terrible. I mentioned, of course, Heaven's Gate. Did anybody ever see Heaven's Gate? Sure. I have never been able to get through it. I mean, this is maybe... The, you want to talk about a terrible film? The, when you got a lot of money to spend and you fuck it up, that's a bad movie. Not some guy who had 30 cents to make a film with and, you know. How about one of the best movies you've ever seen? I can't say that either because uh, what kind of movie? You know? Schindler's List. Nah. Not even close. Not even um, close. Nah. When you when you can get a country to apologize for what they did, even though they knew what they did, I think that's big. Well, I don't think he got any. But did he get the country to apologize on that Germany. one? Germany. He had a private showing in Germany, and and the chancellor of Germany apologized again. You know, or apologized for what Hitler did. Somehow, considering the enormity of the crime, <laughs> apologies don't really work. You know? Well, yeah, but fifty years later, you know, yeah. I don't know. I, well, I, I thought that was. I, I don't. One of the yeah. Better movies I've seen. Well, no, I when I talk we talk about great movies. I mean, people, for instance, who say, "Well, let's talk about the greatest movies you've ever seen," and they start naming pictures like you know Schindler's List, or they'll mention some other picture and whatever. But hmm. none of these people ever saw silent movies, so they really hmm. don't have a large list to choose from. That's true. Because I got to tell you, you go back to the silent films, and I'll tell you one of the greatest films ever made was a film called Sunrise, which was a silent film uh, that I love to watch. When I saw, and and uh, there there was another one. Um, uh, what was the one about the? the oh God, I, my mind's. It was mm. it was done by. Uh, oh, I'm out of it. Why can't I remember it? I'm just it's ridiculous. it happens to all of us Welcome oh to your Jesus city. this one and it's one of the best films ever made I mean it it just uh, uh, it, agreed agreed Eric von Stroheim uh, directed it and uh, it is just an amazing film just an amazing film. and these are silent films the big parade maybe the best war movie ever made but they're all silent films so nobody ever adds those to a list you know, because people just don't watch them. Oh, I don't want to watch silent films. They're boring. Well, if you see them with good music and project it at the proper speed, it, it, like Marjorie uh, would have to agree with me that the greatest experience we ever had in a movie theater is we went over to that, what's that big theater over in Oakland? The uh, uh, Paramount. The, the Paramount. Mm -hmm. And they were ha gonna having a showing of the silent film Napoleon which is, are you ready for this, five, hour, five and a half hours long. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. Five and a half hour silent film. They took a dinner break about a little more than halfway through. And at the end, uh, it fin it, we, and they did it with a live orchestra conducted by Carl Davis, who was this guy who does great scores for old silent films. And we sat there, and Marjorie went, well, I'll just go with you because I'm your girlfriend. And we were, we'd were we gotten married that weekend. She said, I'll, I'll go because I want to share something with you. And we went. She said, I wasn't bored for a second. And then when we were at dinner, she said, I can hardly wait to get back and see the rest of this thing. And at the end, it opens up on three screens like Cinerama did. So you uh, yeah, this is a silent film yeah. done by a, guy, a, a director by the name of Abel Gans. And so when you say, what's the best movie you ever saw? Well, that's the best movie experience I've ever had in a theater. You just like the pipe organ that was there. No, it wasn't a pipe organ. It was an 80-piece orchestra. There's a, there's a pipe organ. Well, I know there. they have a pipe organ there. 100 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, it was just—it was he amazing. He has a movie poster, Alex. Of what? His house. He has a movie poster. It's nice in his house. Of that of Napoleon? Yes, he bought one. Yeah, the artwork is really well. Nice Shecky was with me. Napoleon yeah. was short too. Yeah, he was. It was, a, it was a long picture about a short guy. You know. Yeah. I think I think music and movies and all that stuff. It's what you like is the best. I mean, I remember Alex. You used to get mad at like the reviewers. 
And a lot of people want to find you to get mad at the reviewers because they say, you know, this person went to go see this movie and they probably don't even like comedies or they don't even like that. Yeah, I, I saw a review once by one reviewer who said, oh, I don't like science fiction pictures. But and then he was sent out to review like Star Wars or something like that. And I'm going, <laughs> if you know this guy doesn't like science fiction movies, why are you sending him out to review it? Send somebody out who knows this kind of film and cares about it. You know, I like to listen to in the Bay Area. I don't know what happened to her, Jan Wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she would do reviews here in the Bay Area yeah. on. Uh, I think the, it was you know, KGO. On, yeah. Radio stations, right? Yeah, yeah. I like I liked her uh, take on stuff. Yeah, it's just that you know, I mean, I don't know. I just always had a whole thing about reviewers, and 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 that really, what you got to do with reviewers is you got to find a reviewer that has your taste. Yeah, yeah. And then pay attention to that reviewer, because the other reviewer might not have your taste, and so they're not going to have the same opinion of a film. You know what got me, though? We got Marjorie and I, for a while, we would say, well, what should we go see this weekend? We go to Rotten Tomatoes, oh, and they give something like a 95, right? And then we go to see it, and it sucked. <laughs> I used to do that. And we went, is there something wrong with us? I mean, are we just you know, getting too old for this or whatever? It just was horrible. So we don't pay attention to Rotten Tomatoes anymore, you know? Because uh, who cares if it got 100% of Rotten Tomatoes? If you, if I didn't like it, that's all that mattered because I put out the money for it. So, but you know, uh, years ago, I you know you know I I became a big expert at trivia. I don't know if I can play it that much anymore. Movie trivia, and you know how I got to learn movie trivia? Every night I would I was working in Chicago, and every night when I got off the air, I would go down to the old town in Chicago, and I would meet up with a guy who owned a movie theater in Chicago that showed two new films every day, and they were old films. And you could always go down there and see something that was a real gem. He just had new his movies. And his good pal and he used to go down to this bar in the old town and, and literally play trivia about movies with each other, batting back and forth questions. So I just sat there and listened to the two of them uh, doing this, and after a while, I became an expert too. And I started joining in, and I would then read on it, and I'd go down to meet with them, and I'd have something that I figured, they don't know this one, you know. And the other guy was Roger Ebert. Oh, Roger Ebert. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And Roger really knew a lot about movies, you know. I mean, he really knew his movie trivia. And I learned my movie trivia from Roger Ebert. So I, th I think a lot of people, if they don't like the disc jockey on a radio station, move on too. Well, yeah. But the thing is that you could say, well, you know, I, he, his music is not my taste. But the fact is he doesn't choose his music. Yeah, so that, I like that hasn't gone on for years where the jock came in and brought his music library in and played Wait, it on the air. I remember those days. Yeah, but... They went by, they went away pretty fast, you know. So now all, all of it, you know, here, here is the thing I used to love about radio stations. They go, call us up with your requests. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then people would call up and request me songs. And, uh, uh, you know, they didn't listen to anybody <laughs> about what yeah, they wanted to hear. The mom in bed by the but, time the song. But played. what would happen is, let's say, you wanted to hear the Rolling Stones, right? Uh, Jumpin' Jack Flash. And you call up and say, Jumpin' Jack Flash. And within an hour or so, or two hours, you hear Jumpin' Jack Flash, you think, ah, oh, they, 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 they did my request. <laughs> no, they didn't. They had a playlist, and it simply came up. You know? But they, it was the biggest con in the world. Call us and tell us what you want to hear. They never played what you wanted to hear. They never cared what you wanted to hear. Have I just ruined the radio business for you? Yeah. Yeah. No. It's nothing new. <laughs> That's why I came up with a slogan when I first went to San Francisco. I don't know if you were around that early for it, Brian, but when I was at KMEL, I had a slogan, and it was, I don't take no requests. Oh, yeah. 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 We had a billboard off the bridge of me going, I don't take no requests. 
uh, because I just thought taking requests was the stupidest thing you could do. No wonder you needed a bodyguard. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I, I had a rather negative personality. Is that how we would describe it? Back then. How would you describe it, Brian? You were very mean. <laughs> and I went to all, I went to, geez, I don't know how many breakfast of Bennett's I went to. And getting there before you guys open, I'd be first in line. Yeah. And, and yeah, it was, yeah, you were not good. Not, not, not <laughs> well, but yeah, but I, people didn't hate me. No, no. At the shows, you were nice. They you liked know, me because I was. They liked up. me because I was belligerent. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, and so. and, uh, and and they never really. Uh, well, but what what did I what did I do that was mean to people? I didn't do anything mean to people, did I? Mm, really? I think just your demeanor. You know how you, you sort of you know this is the way it is, and da, 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 you know. That kind of stuff. Well, oh, I would put people down, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. But uh, those are the type of people you. who need bodyguards. Hmm? <laughs> that's that's why I needed a bodyguard. Absolutely. You know, I went to I went to your high school. You remember you did the one at Drake, right? Right, uh, Sir Francis Drake, right? We did a show at Sir Francis Drake High School. Yeah, but in the gym, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I was I was there at that one. But I, that Monty, I had we had Monty Hoffman on that show, and he did something which the school got enraged about. I can't remember what it was now. Oh, really? But I got really mad at him because I said, you know, this is my high school. How can you do this to me? You know? Oh, I didn't know, man. You know? And I think I banned him from the show for about six months after that. <laughs> you know? A front row with uh, Bob Geldof when he sang I, I Don't Like Mondays. Remember, he was from the Boom, Boomtown Rats. Yeah, but I don't remember him being on the show singing, but he was? Yeah, he was. He really? was one of the Breakfast of Bennett's. Oh, wow. Because later so on... I wanted, I... To see, so I wanted to see if you had pictures from back then, because I'd be curious to see if when you take pictures of the of the audience, if I was right there. Well, you know, you had some pictures from, from yeah. some of your shows. The, the only time I remember having Geldof on was he, he was, I had him on at Sirius XM. Now, I may have had him on, you know, a lot of times I would have people on those shows in, in, in San Francisco that I don't even remember they were on. Uh, Louis Black, when I had Louis Black on my show in, at, at uh, Sirius XM, he said, well, you know, you remember me, don't you? And I went, what? He said, I did your morning show in San Francisco. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't remember him. He said, I don't blame you for not remembering me because I, I wasn't screaming and shouting back in those days. Okay, then I came up with a screaming, shouting thing. Um, but I, uh, uh, occasionally there were people that I, that I had had on there that I didn't know I had on. I didn't know when I had Geldof on at Sirius XM that I, that I uh, the reason I remember Geldof at Sirius XM is because uh, he had probably one of the most famous uh, audio clips of anything that I've ever done with Bob Geldof. He did a promotion for me because what we did is we discussed, I discussed with him, I said, I got a problem. I said, you guys in England call each other cunts. I said, it's not even used as an expression to say to a woman or about a woman, it's what one guy says to another. And they said, yeah, guys call each other cunts in England. You know, oh, you cunt, you know. And, uh, and, and please, folks, don't think I'm saying something about women here. I'm talking about guys. And so he did a promo for me that I had there saying that, uh, Alex, this is Bob Geldof, I'm, and I just want to say, you're a real cunt. And that was my promo that I had for years that we would use on Sirius XM. But that he, I remember that because we discussed that, that particular thing. I do not remember that he was on my show in San Francisco. You have a lot of pictures uh, in uh, Petaluma still with, from Breakfast of I, I don't. It's not pictures that I have. I have a lot of tapes still there, you know. Uh -huh. um, and I'm, um, there's still some that have to still be sent to me by uh, Damien if he ever gets around to them. Uh, and, and somewhere in all those tapes, which are very hard to look go through uh, maybe uh, uh, the boomtown rats you know uh, could very well be you know but in any event um some of the some of the djs here that i remember you know in the bay area 
Dr. Don something or Dr. other. Dr. Don Rose, Don yeah. Rose. Yeah, Dr. Don, Jane Dornocker. Well, Jane was, was a comedian. She was she was uh, doing a traffic report over the Potomac in the helicopter. No, no, weekend. no, over the Hudson River in Hudson, New York. Whatever. And whose show Almost. was she doing it on, doing it for? Yeah. Who was, whose show was she doing it for? She It crashed and she died. Yep. I don't remember. It was in the 80s, yeah. I think, that it happened. It was the Howard Stern show. Oh. Yeah. No, nah, it was a traffic. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it was a traffic report for the Howard Stern show. She was Howard Stern's traffic reporter. So, yeah, it was kind of sad because she was a very nice lady and a very funny comic. And uh, Yeah, I, you I know, remember. She uh, was on one of the stations. It was here. sad to see what happened, you know. Um, but it was one of those. Freak it's interesting. You need you need more than a helicopter to go down in the in in, in a ri river like that, like the Potomac or something like that. They had a jet go off the runway, I guess, into the Potomac, and people were diving off of the bridge to save people. Wow. So for a helicopter, who cares? Yeah. Uh, you know, when you got a a, a passenger jet, yeah, goes into it. Yeah. I don't know what airports near that, but uh, right. I'm not good with the uh, East Coast stuff. Yeah. But uh, a passenger jet, they show people diving into freezing water to, you know, save people. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, so it, it and, and some of the people here don't even know about that part of my career, the San Francisco days. Some people do know about my New York career. I don't know. Do you remember, Tony, my New York career at all? Actually, I don't because I was too young, but my cousins did Fuck listen to you. Out. What? <laughs> And, uh, your brother, and oh, Emilio. your brother remembers me. My mother doesn't listen to the. No, radio. your brother. I said, not oh, your mother. My my brother. I would say no. It was more my cousin Caroline, Mary. And they were in the seventies, so they listened to your show. Oh, they really? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Because they would have been there about in their early sixties. Those were the days when you had two separate careers. You could do a career in New York and then move to San Francisco, and completely change your act and do anything you wanted to, and create a whole new reputation. Um, today that isn't true. Today you go syndicated and everybody hears you all over the country. You know. Tony go to yell at his mother again. Hmm. Did Tony go to it yell happens. at his you mother see, again? I mean, he has a job. It's his job. He calls us from from work. He gets paid. Uh, that looks that looks like a dining room table that he sat at earlier. No, the 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 curtains look like the dining room table. I mean, that, is that not mo the most hideous wallpaper you've ever? Absolutely. It's probably his mother probably handpicked it. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yeah, I'm sure she did. I'm I sure don't know the house. The house that I'm living in, everything was turquoise. Was you know, really? the lady that was living here liked turquoise. I mean, there was turquoise paint in the kitchen that I'm in. It took me three coats of white paint to cover the damn stuff oh yeah the appliances were turquoise oh it was yeah. it, it you know in the 60s yeah. it was when the house was built that was the uh you know that was the color turquoise avocado well, pink. A, we just had a big question tony who picked out the wallpaper my mother and she's in the bathroom again she doesn't sleep i gave her pms she's not she gets up she she, Alex, she still lives like it's the 60s. I'm can, I, can I give you a hint about a little pill to get her? Oxycontin. Oh, my brother's on it. What? He just, you know why? Because of the tongue. They say if you feel the pain. I think it's the probably oxycodine. Oh. Okay, not oxycontin. Oh, I'm on the radio, ma. Who am I talking? How does she hear the radio? radio. When I talk to her before. He's um, watching porn. Crazy talking to yourself. Your son's watching porn. <laughs> what are you watching? An old movie? We watched Funny Girl tonight. This is what we did. She knows the whole movie backwards and forwards. What movie? Fanny Bryce. Funny Girl? Funny Girl? Oh, you mean Mar Barbara Streisand yeah. as yeah. fun as Fanny Bryce. All right. How can I help her out of the bed before she kills herself? <laughs> I'm still on duty. <laughs> I'm not even yeah. don't, don't let her kill yourself, man. That's your. Yeah, if she yeah. dies, you, you, you well. He probably, gonna get it, go he's going to inherit that wallpaper is what's going to happen. I've been, I've been having the kids <clears throat> watch uh, Cosmos. Yeah, uh, Charlie will like this. Yeah, we've been watching <clears throat> one yeah. episode of Cosmos every night. And how do they like it? The boy likes it a lot. I can tell. Yeah, which really which one? The, the one that uh, uh, DeGrasse yeah, Tyson yeah, yeah, did? Right. Yeah. yeah. Not Carl Sagan. Not Carl yeah. Sagan. No, the yeah. new one's pretty good. 
I mean, yeah. you know, it, yeah. it, it gets the science out there just as well as the yeah. originals did. Yeah, and the girl likes it because it looks like Star Wars. You know, they do a lot of the animation and, you know, when he's flying through stuff and bodies and stuff like that. So, uh, so and, you know, they, they, they have the stories really well. So it's it's really easy to follow and, and stuff. So, yeah, really like it. So they're watching yeah. one a night with me. Yeah. So, well, that's good. That's yeah. nice family time during the COVID blight that we have going yeah. here. Um, yeah. how, how are the kids doing with school in all of this? Hey. <clears throat> Actually, they have finals this week. Um, they're doing, they're doing okay. They were doing better. They were doing better when they were going to school. You know, they, they're doing like A's and B's now. They're straight A's before, but, uh, just, yeah. It's just... You know, they really should adjust the grading system for COVID. In other words, if they're not doing as well this year as they did last year, there should be an adjustment to that better grade, just simply because they just aren't able to do it as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, and um, and then the uh, then Adrian, she uh, one problem we're having is you know they give a stack of probably about thirty different papers for her mm -hmm. for one month, and then it's hard for her to fig find them, mm -hmm. and it's hard for the other kids to stop what they're doing. But now they post every day yeah. what they're doing. So let me so ask you. Sure. Let me ask a little quick, little political question. What do you think of <laughs> uh, some of Biden's choices for his cabinet? Well, I guess that answered it. Uh, you know, Pete Buttigieg. You know, I mean, uh, this guy goes from being a uh, a mayor to. Uh, you know, he moved right up pretty quick. He's gay. Yeah, he'll be the first. And, and I, uh, I think he's very. You know, I think he's very sharp. He is very sharp. You know, and, and he is very sharp. probably do the job perfectly. Uh, I, I like Buttigieg a lot. I just yep. think he's, you know, I think he's yep. he's smart and he's uh, he's informed and he's not pedantic about stuff. You know, he's not like he's a, he's a liberal, but he's not going to slam it down your throat. Who's, you might slam the, something else down your throat, but not. Uh, <laughs> who's, uh, I had to say that. I just had to say that. I'm sorry, folks, because it's OK, you know, you know. but I think I think if Pete were friends. here, he would laugh, too. You know, what uh, uh, who's he going to appoint for attorney general Hillary? Well, what they're everybody oh, says he should do is 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 Andrew Cuomo. Uh Cuomo yeah. was an attorney general here in the state of New York. Uh, I think Trump would have a heart attack if he appointed Hillary. Well, I don't think Hillary would make a good attorney general. You know, Where? you know, I think I think I, I you know, I, I don't know what you would appoint her. I wouldn't appoint her to anything. OK, no. she's had her time in the sun and, you know, what? She needs the job. Come on, you know. Uh, a lot of press releases, but uh, no, a lot of people were saying uh, the the prime choice for uh, for attorney general is uh, Andrew Cuomo, and he would be. Except I don't think he wants to be. He oh. loves being king of New York. You know, he loves being the governor of New York. When you're the governor of New York, my God, you're the governor of maybe the third largest country in the world or something. So you're you're dealing with uh, you have a lot of power. I, I think California's got New York beat. Sorry. Got New York beat? Yeah. California is the sixth largest economy in the world. Yeah, which would make New York somewhere like the seventh or eighth. Probably so. You know. Although Texas is coming up Texas, pretty good. Texas is going to come up with all, everybody moving there. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is that before we're through, everybody in Texas, except for Charlie, is going to be dead. <laughs> and, and, and the only reason Charlie ain't going to be dead is because he hasn't gone outside. What do you do about shopping, Charlie? About, about once a week, once every nine days, I'll go out to this grocery store and get supplies. Okay. What do you wear? <laughs> I wear a mask. Now, do you have anything like a, a, a do you have a sun deck or anything like that? Or are you just stuck in that apartment? No, I, I stay in the apartment. I've gone as long as 11 days without ever leaving my apartment. Hmm. Okay. I have a four-bedroom house. I've I've gone a week, week and a half in the house, too. I, You know, the house is set up for everything. I got, you know, television, high-speed internet. Yeah, I got my movies. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You got his exercise bike, Alex. Yeah, I got my, yeah. Yeah, I got, I, got, I got the exercise bike. I have an exercise bike. It collects dust. I used to have a joke. I have a, I have a stationary bike. It isn't supposed to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, Both need to find 10 minutes of your day. Just 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes? I think what I'll do is I'm going to start I'm going to start doing 10 minutes a day. I'm going to do 10 minutes, 15, 15 minutes a day. Work your way up. Don't. Work my Well, you say you only do 15, right, Charlie? Yeah, but I you know, I didn't start out doing 15. I think I did like 2 minutes the first time. Oh no, I can do I can do 25 minutes on one of those bikes. I used to go down and do the stationary down at the uh, gym and you do You pedal the bike too, Alex? What? When you're on it for 15 or 20 minutes, do you actually pedal? No, I have somebody else do it for me. But, okay, you good, know, good. I, I, feel, I feel the pain. <laughs> you know. Uh, I just got a, a, a Max Trainer, it's called, by <laughs> Bowflex. It's like a, I like the elliptical and the, the gym's closed again. So I said, screw it. So I still have my own gym in the garage. But it's like elliptical and a, <laughs> a Stairmaster sort of in between. Nice. And so I've been doing that now. Yes, so. Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, I'm using the uh, equipment yeah. in the basement here. Yeah. Okay. Good. By the oh. way, by the way, how many? Anybody here have ro a Roku? Oh, I do. You I do. Like well, the Roku, uh, which has been a having a problem lately, because HBO Max, which is really one of the biggest, most fulfilling of all the online services, is not on Roku. Until tomorrow, they finally made a deal. Wow. So uh, as of tomorrow, you'll be able to put, uh, you know, uh, HBO Max on your, on your Roku. But, uh, you know, Roku, uh, they were fighting for a while. They were, uh, and I think, I think, to be honest with you, I think HBO won is what happened. I think Roku folded. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. Anyway, there's the theme. Hey, it's been kind of nice, just a bunch of people just talking, enjoying themselves. Where have the rest of you been tonight? I don't care. I like Jeffrey, and I like our new friend Alan, who has joined the fray. And, of course, uh, Charlie is always terrific. Uh, Brian, great having you here. And Tony, oh, I love your wallpaper and your mother. Oh, this is, it's the biggest comedy routine we have going on this show. Anyway, every one of you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye as well. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. There. Okay, they are uh, out of here, and uh, I'm going to be out of here in a couple of seconds. What comes up next here uh, on uh, GabNet is the intersection with Jack Bishop, and he will be here taking your calls at uh, the on skype at gabnet live that's the uh, you just put that in there and go gabnet live and then you ring that and uh next thing you know you're talking to jack and his uh, his citizen panel we'll be back again tomorrow night right here same time same station in life and as always if you see her tell her i love her okay or as they say in new york i love her okay and in the meantime please be good to yourself. Be safe out there. Wear a mask. Be kind to each other. Okay, we'll see you later.